Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another edition of Special Edition on the Image TV Podcast. You're locked and loaded into nothing but love. We've got nothing but power all over this episode, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, we've got Troy Muir joining us and Trent Muir joining us from Arizona. And we're right here in the Des Moines, Iowa studio. And I've also got Ralph Hall to the left of me. And he's going to talk about the blue carpet event. And we're also gonna talk about the image talent show that's coming up, Drake Relay, April 30th, uh, this Saturday at the Marriott Hotel. Now, before we get into that, ladies and gentlemen, if you thought episode 35 was nice, episode 36 is going to really catch your interest. We've got some of uh, the former uh, notorious uh, former gang members, street gangs, uh, that were here in Des Moines, Iowa, who used to take, and now they're looking to give back. We're still in our stop the violence season uh, all across the country, particularly right here in Des Moines, Iowa. And we feel that we've been making some noise on the Image TV podcast. People are listening. Uh, It's starting to get out. And I tell you, grab your popcorn and take notes because this here is going to get deep. I want to start off with Trent Muir. Trent, you are... One that is uh, someone that has changed their mind. You're one that has changed their way of thinking. Uh, You've went uh, into a mature level into your life. And so I want you to tell us a little bit about your, first of all, your story. uh, And also, then we're going to also talk about your change and your, your new organization that you have with Blue Panther and what it's designed okay. to do. Okay. Uh, well, I started gang banging back in 1983, but don't mistake anything. I've been a part of a gang since I was eight years old. That first gang was the Muir brothers. All right. So this wasn't new to me. By the time I had reached the streets of California, just none of this was new to me. It just helped me to survive and make it through there. And um, so um, during that, that that long course, man, of, 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 of violence and, and, and funerals and, and um, I mean, just seeing one brother after another being killed, that touched me. Um, once I gained knowledge of who I was, then it really was able to touch me and show me that the lives that I had ruined, the gang that I had brought down to Iowa and the lives that had destroyed, that it was pretty much, it was, a, it was a burden on my shoulder and it was it was a weight that I carried for a long, long time. And um, it took, I'm not going to say anything pertaining to gangs specifically. Um, what what it really did, what really hit home for me was um, the passing of my mother and my father. Okay, that that um, that there gave me a real smack of a dose of reality, and um, I started to change my way of thinking. I started to uh, embrace the black color as opposed to wanting to shoot at it or or get rid of it um and and it is you know this is not something that happened overnight it, um it, it took a while for me to 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 realize that the things that i was doing were not right they were wrong i destroyed a whole bunch of lives um and i i'm here now to say that i'm sorry and i i want to want to be able to heal this community that i destroyed so I, I thought of a, well, it kind of came to me through a program that I was watching about extinction uh, animals and, 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 and it mentioned black people that, that could be possibly extinct. And so that's where I came up with my name, Blue Panthers. 
which stands for Black Lives Under Extinction. The Panthers on there signifies the reality of extinction because the Panthers, as we know, are extinct. They do have subchapters of Cub Panthers, but but the Black Panthers itself is, is extinct. So it, this can happen if we if we don't t uh, grab a hold of um, this gang violence that's that's perpetrating in our streets. Um, a lot of these kids they they don't even have a clue on what they're claiming or what they're saying that they are, and 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 it's and they're killing other people f for for no reason. So it's, it's it's really a stupid game that we played on the streets out there, and and it's time for this the healing process to begin here in Iowa. And me and my brother Troy, we are um, willing to step forward. And, and, and bring that change that that community is seeking uh, with the help of, of Bobby Pate and, and people like Bobby Pate down in that area. So we're willing to come down there and, and do what we need to do to, to grab a hold of these children and, and, and get them on the right paths. I think that that's wonderful. And, you know, uh, to hear your transformation and your change and what you're willing to do now in moving forward um, is, is very important and it's very inspiring. Uh, here in Des Moines, Iowa, we've had a, a, a string of, of killings and shootings, and I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of just calmed down a little bit, but, you know, we always want to make sure that we're reinforcing through Image for Lives and through the Image TV podcast how important it is to realize that uh, the gangs and the myths that come along with gangs that are out there these days are nothing but uh, traps and pitfalls for people and they're falling in them left and right uh, now uh, Troy when people think of some of the most notorious gangs uh, here in Des Moines Iowa uh, the rolling 90 Crips and and back in 1989 and how a lot of this stuff struck you know the streets of Des Moines they think of Troy Muir and Trent Muir and a lot of others uh, but, Troy, they particularly uh, have a focus on that uh, negativity and that gang violence when they think of you. Can you tell us the man that you are today? Yes. Um, the man I am today is a mature man who um, matured and who's opened his eyes and was able to do some in-depth personal inventory, honest personal inventory. And it didn't just take, didn't wasn't just overnight. It took months of this inventory. And it was a lot of hurt, a lot of sorrow. Um, and it provoked change in me. And the as I matured, as I started to mature, I started, I realized that all that that I was doing there in Des Moines, Iowa, was wrong. It has no future for me or for the kids that are there uh, per perpetrating it now. And I was just looking for a way, any type of way that I could maybe give back to Des Moines and that community and to try to help it to heal and to bring awareness to the senselessness of gangs and the violence that comes with it. There's only two paths that, 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 that it has and those paths are prison and death. If you don't wake up and get up out of it in time, that's what you're facing. And I had already did the prison. I was in prison when I started having these, uh, when I started doing these personal inventories. And like my brother Trent said, I was in prison when I lost my mother and my father. And that was a rude awakening for me also too. And I convicted myself and I told myself that, okay, that was it. Things have to change. I lost my mother and my father while in prison, was not able to uh, go to their funerals or see them 
before they passed and it hurt me deeply and so it provoked change in me i was already craving it but didn't know it because i was maturing and didn't know it and then when i realized that i was maturing i grabbed hold of it and i started working with it and uh let me just say i just i was in prison i jumped into all programs that i could that i thought that would help me to be a better citizen in society all the programs that i could jump into that would help me to be a better person to myself my family members and the community that i live in and so forth and so on and so i grabbed these things and i grabbed and i held and i i just i grabbed hold of them and i and i started doing just doing the the inventory on myself and being honest and and being open about it you know and 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 open about the change and wanting to change and then i started doing things about the change so that's, that's we, beautiful that's man that's beautiful i mean you can continue to go on i i love hearing it because it's coming from your heart and you're right that's where that change comes from and there's so many people that knew you as this monster as this negative uh gang leader who uh didn't have any feelings or uh care about someone or who who was uh, particularly against you know your gang or or whatever but all the negativity that comes with that type of violence i know that uh your alias is uh troy muir aka murder one now how do, do people still call you that today well some people do that aren't that haven't interacted with me in years but the people that have interacted with me in years and have um have witnessed my change and and had and have uh, participated in my growth and development of myself know that um i don't I, I i don't answer to that name um i i i just i strictly if you're gonna if you if you must say if you must call me something just call me one because i am just one individual okay i am one individual and i'm an individual now who isn't seeking to hurt anyone or to harm anyone. I'm an individual now seeking to love someone, seeking to be loved, um, seeking to heal and seeking to, 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 to help the healing. And, and that's where I'm at here today. Um, um, I haven't been in no prisons or in no jails in over the past 12 years. Congratulations. Um, I've been, been working um i've graduated from college cypress college in california as a drug and alcohol uh, counselor um and have been partaking in those activities and 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 things of that nature is what's been going on in my life over the past 12 years since i started since i started the transformation and the change in my life i think that's beautiful i also had a chance to uh interact with your son uh, while i was incarcerated at north central correctional facility and I was was glad to have that opportunity to meet him. And, uh, you know, I, I just think it's 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 just wonderful to be able to hear someone like you talk about your transformation, uh, especially as opposed to uh, the man that they used to look up to you for being. And, um, you know, we go back to uh, those late 80s or, or, the, or the late 80s, early 90s when a lot of that gang violence was in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, you, now, you said that you would love to have the opportunity to serve your community now because you used to take and, 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 and all the harm that you used to do in your community. You would love to have, to have the opportunity to now uh, be a pillar in the community of Des Moines if you had that opportunity. And that was inspiring to me, Troy, when you said that, uh, when you knew the position that I was in. So, uh, can, but can you talk about that uh, just a little bit? And, and, and then I want to come back over to you, Trent. I want to also talk about this uh, Blue Panther Incorporation and how you started that and how you wrote your book 
and, and okay. all of that. But uh, I, I just want to hear that real quick, Troy. I think a lot of us want to know about that. Uh, so could you uh, elaborate on that, please? Well, you know, I, I lived I, I lived my life at when I was uh, participating in the gangs and stuff. As a person, I didn't care. I didn't care about my own life, and I didn't care about the lives of others. And as I started maturing, and I was a late bloomer, but God willing, I, I mature. I started maturing, and uh, as I started maturing, and I started reflecting on the negative that I had spread it throughout Des Moines, Iowa, and not just Des Moines, but other places as well. And just a great burden fell upon my heart. And I went through a stage of metamorphosis. I I transformed and I changed. And I would like to, to come back to Des Moines. And I would like to just let the people know that look up to me in that negative aspect. And let them know that that's not the way. That is not the way. It's not. It, it, it brings nothing but hatred, death, jail, and things of that nature. And that's not what I seek in life today. In life today, I seek to love one another. I seek to be a friend and to have a friend, not to be an enemy and to, and to have enemies. I seek to be a friend and to have friends. Amen, that's what I'm set out to do today. I would love to come back and let the kids know and the adults that are participating in this negativity and let them know that, hey, it's wrong. And a lot of you are not going to get the opportunity uh, that I have been given to still be alive and to make the changes and to be able to elaborate on them on these changes and to try to tell you that the life that I was living is a life of death. And if you're a God-fearing man like myself, it's a path to hell. And I want to go to heaven. Amen. Amen. Now, I got a question, uh, Troy. Uh, you, you talk about the different opportunities that you had. Uh, you could have easily had, uh, could be in prison serving life, a life sentence over, you know, and over and over and over. So you were able and fortunate enough to be able to come out uh, just like a Damon uh, Callaway, who we had on episode 35 uh, last week, uh, was able to uh, come out of prison. You know, you were able to come out of prison and, you know, escape the, the, the traps and the pitfalls of being in there, you know, stuck in there with a life sentence. The good Lord, you know, shined a blessing on you and, 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 and released you. And uh, could you talk about that? Well, yeah. Um, uh, you know, in, in, in my state of ignorance, when these things were transpiring, I thought that I was, you know, number one, I thought that I was it, you know, but not realizing that that wasn't God's plan for me. And until I was able to open my eyes and realize that God had a different plan for me, only then was I able to start doing things to change. You know, uh, God's plan for me wasn't life in prison. His plan for me is this right here to be able to talk to people and to talk to the communities and to give back and to tell them that, hey, the things that I was doing, the things that I did were wrong. And please, please don't try to follow in my footsteps. Don't try to be like the man that I was. If you want to be anything like me, look at me today and inspire to be like the person that I am today. Because the person that I am today is a person who takes responsibility for my own actions. I will not let another person dictate whether or not I uh, 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 um, get off into violence or negativity because I'm responsible for me. If, if a person is saying something or or doing something that I don't like and that I know that's going to irritate me or whatever, then I, it's my responsibility to be responsible for me to remove myself from the situation and get away and, and, and get away instead of stay there and let it provoke me and, and do whatever, you know. 
Correct. Correct. Thank you so much, uh, Troy. Now, uh, I want to come back over to you, Trent. Uh, we are going to have to go into a real quick break. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, when we come back, we are going to speak with Trent Muir and we're going to talk about Blue Panther. And we're going to talk about uh, the Blue Panther uh, organization. And we're going to talk about uh, how the founder in Trent Muir actually founded this program and uh, what it stands for. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we are going to talk about Blue Panther Incorporated. Don't touch that dial. We'll be back after these messages. Gentlemen, boys, and girls, the Image Program is hosting its fourth annual National Talent Show, Drake Relay Weekend, April 30th from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Downtown Marriott Hotel, hosted by News Channel 8's Marcus McIntosh. For more information, contact Bobby Pate at 515-326-5498. This is a public announcement. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I've got a uh, special guest with me here on episode uh, 36. This is special edition. And for all of you in Des Moines, Iowa, remember, please come on out and support on April 30th, Drake Relay Weekend. We've come together as uh, business, some young businessmen here in our middle aged businessmen yes, yes. here in uh, Des Moines, Iowa. And we realize that coming together is important. And so that's one of the trends that we want to continue to set. So we've provided entertainment for everyone in Des Moines, Iowa, whether you are a kid or whether you are an adult. So we've got the Image Talent Show, April 30th uh, at the Marriott Hotel from 7 to 10 p.m. You can buy your tickets at the door. This is going to be a great 20-act uh, event. Uh, there's going to be 20 acts. We'll have Desmond Logan from Cash Cars down here from Kansas City. Uh, we'll also have Marcus McIntosh as one of the hosts. Uh, we are also going to have a lot of great uh, competition. And then it's the blue carpet event, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes. Uh, I believe it's what the the eighth annual, seventh, seventh annual. Yes. Uh, uh, Ralph, we've got Ralph Hall. Tell us a little bit about the blue carpet event. Uh, thanks, Bob, for having me on today. You know, I appreciate that uh, image for lives. I'm so the thing about the blue carpet, uh, it's, a, it's a good event. It started in 2016, so it's 2022 now, and it's had nothing but growth. Uh, it's a real positive celebration to come to with the blue theme to it. Um, it's, it's just a big, you don't want to miss it. It's something that, you know, it's a motivation thing. Uh, it's a major networking event, uh, so you... People who are in business come down. If you have business cards, pass out business cards. Let people know who you are, where you're from, and what you do. Uh, it, it's a positive. Of, of course, we like to do this in the evening, but we do have, like Bob said, stuff for the children and the families and stuff in the earlier part of the day. But the blue carpet is something that you, you really don't want to miss. And uh, I mean, I could go on and on about it, but you know, basically, I want you to know that it is on April 30th. And you guys get big crowds for these events. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the blue carpet event is something I started, like I said, in 2016. And it was an idea I had that just came from a lot of different ideas about the community and the city that I'm from and, and the celebrations that we have and stuff like that. It was really deeply rooted in me. And uh, 
it took me a while to get it up and running because, of course, there were, used to be lots of things going on and it was just big. Oh, yeah. You know, Drake Relays was big. So uh, me reaching out to some people and just keeping it in my heart. And finally, in 2016, I got it up off the ground. So this year, if you've never attended a blue carpet event celebration, we do it every year at the end of April. But this year, make sure you come out. Tell a friend, bring a friend, bring your business cards. This is a major networking event. Uh, you just don't want to miss this. It's, it's, it's grown. It's a grown up event. So you would like to wear business casual to upper class casual wear. So you don't want to miss this 9 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. Right after the Image Talent Show, April 30th, the Blue Carpet Event 2022, hosted by Rafael Cornelius. I look forward to seeing everybody there. Thank now, you. Now, you've also got that sneaker ball key, uh, coming up too Friday. That'll be uh, April 29th. Yes. Now, the sneaker ball, I didn't want to take up a lot of time, but thank you for saying that because I wanted to throw that in there. The sneaker ball, this is our second annual sneaker ball. Now, me being from the Midwest and being from Des Moines, Iowa, but, you know, being in the Midwest, I've realized that this is a sneaker part of the country. So, it's very popular. The tennis shoes... In my city, where I'm from, is very, very popular. So make sure you come out to the second annual sneaker ball hosted by my friend Cash. Man, it's going to be a, a, a great evening. It's going to be a great weekend. And, and so, where's that going to be at? What's the address for the sneaker ball? 3411 Southeast 14th. And what time does that start? That starts from 9 p.m. to 1.30 a.m., the sneaker ball, oh, second annual. Right. And I, Hey, so you look at – now, Des Moines, Iowa, you can't miss this – April 30th, Drake Relay Weekend. You've got Friday, April 29th. Starts off with the Sneaker Ball Bash. Yes, yes. And then you've got Saturday. You've got the Image Talent Show. Yes. Kids, family, come yes. on out. Yes. There's no alcohol at this event. Yes. This is going to be a smooth sailing event. I mean, you've got Marcus McIntosh, News Channel 8, one of the hosts. Yes. Desmond Logan from Cash Cars, my first cousin, is going to come down from Kansas City. He's going to donate his time. He's going to be another host. And then you've got... a. Uh, field of talent we've got 20 acts that's, that's, that's right great. 20 acts and we've got a lot of these people coming from all over the country i mean this is going to be something that you don't want to miss ladies and gentlemen we've got a lot to offer here and we've we're coming together uh, in our communities we're trying to stop the violence so let's go back to episode 36 and speak with trent muir and talk more about this blue panther organization and uh, Trent Muir, so uh, we are back. We want to hear a little bit more about uh, how you came up with uh, this whole Blue Panther and what inspired you uh, to start this and what does this program actually stand for? All right, how you doing, Bobby? Thank you for having me here today. Um, so the Blue Panthers, man, is, is, is designed to, um, to educate and inform pretty much is the, the basics of it and, and to educate these kids about black on black crime and uh, um, the effects that it's having on our communities. Um, I want to implement that um, with my brother by my side in this, uh, it helps for us to be able to reach these kids because I, I'm taking on the fact that I want people that walked in them shoes to be able to, because nine times out of 10, a person doesn't want to hear anything from you. If you haven't walked in his shoes or down the path that he's walked down. So I know me and my brothers, we walk down pretty much the same path, you know? And so, um, so that's going to make us double strong. Okay. And what we're trying to do here, the mission that we're trying to bring here, uh, we're going to be bringing, um, uh, with the blue Panthers, we're going to be bringing, uh, assistance to families who lose children to gang violence. Uh, we will be, uh, I'm sorry, was you asking something? No, 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 not at all. And, okay, and yeah, so we're I was just thinking, I did get the chance to meet with your board to sit in on one of your board meetings. And I thought yes. that that was awesome. So you've got people from all over the country on your board. Uh, and, yes. and, and so, uh, and you've also got your brother and Troy there, uh, on your board. I think that that's remarkable to bring your brother alongside of you and, uh, make it, and, and he is, he, he serves as the president. Am I correct? Yes, he is. Wow. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's really amazing. 
Yeah. So, so we're, we're, we're basically, we're trying to, we're, we're, we're getting up and running, uh, Bobby. Um, we have a, a, a office down in Des Moines. Uh, we have an office that we're trying to open in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, we are trying to open an office in Denver, Colorado. We are actually operating out of LA. We're operating out of Phoenix, Arizona. And, and, and like I said, Des Moines, Iowa. So, I mean, it, it's a, it's <laughs> transition, man. It's going to be nationwide, worldwide. I mean, we're, we're not, um, this is not directed to any type of color factor because we're here to help any kid, whether it be white, black, brown, any kid that wants out of gangs that doesn't want any part of that life that needs that, 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 that uh, mentoring to give up out of there. We're, we're willing to help all of them. So it's just not a black thing. That's but of good. course we no. but of course we have to of course we have to start with to the group of course to which we belong okay so so but but it, it's, it's going to come along bobby and, and i appreciate you having me on here me and my brother so we can uh uh, uh get this out there man and it's a beautiful thing that you're doing and i, I just appreciate uh everything that you're doing man well i want to tell you that i'm also i'm also appreciative to you guys uh, for, you know, embracing Image for Lives and, and us being able to come together and being able to talk. You know, I plan to come out there to Phoenix, Arizona, you know, and for you guys to, you know, uh, come out with me, interact with some some events, you know, meet some yes, different sir. people, you know, they're, they're in the line of work with uh, nonprofits, with this, uh, you know, uh, uh, Stop the Violence and people that are really trying to to make some moves. You know, I know that there's some people that are working in reentry out there that also, mm -hmm. uh, there, there's probably some events that'll be taking place uh, that I missed. I, I know there'll be some events that'll be taking place that I actually missed last year out there. I plan to come okay. out and, uh, you know, plan to, to link up with you guys out there and, and, and make sure that we continue this growth. You talk about these different offices that you have. I think that that's amazing. You know, uh, you know, you guys are, are, are nationwide. I mean, and you're connecting the dots ac across the <laughs> globe. Uh, that, that's, that's wonderful. You also have a book that is that, that you wrote i believe that that has came out is that correct uh I, actually it hasn't came out but I, I have wrote a book uh i wrote a book on my life um it's a story about um a, a young kid that's pretty much been a part of a gang his whole life okay and it and it tells you i mean and it's raw it's 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 a true story. It's uh, there's nothing artificial, synthetic, or plastic about what I'm saying. Everything is real. Everything happened. There's a message in there, though, and there's a message in there about them things that I explained to you in that book about how wrong I was. Okay, and 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 and, and we talked earlier about uh, you know how these kids, you know, they get this grandiose illusion about these gangs, and and. and I fail for it as well. So, I mean, you know, I, I can understand how that happens because I fail for it. And, 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 you know, it's, it's the, the life when you, when you're, when you're living in gangs, the life will swallow you whole. Your friends are actually the ones that you really need to watch out for because they're your enemies as well. Now, them is the ones that are smiling in your face and all that stuff. But once you go to prison and you, and when, when you're out of there, you'll, you'll find out who your real friends are. Right. This happened to me as well when I went to prison. And that, that's been over 30 years ago. I, I, I will not ever go back and I will not let anybody be the reason for me going back. Uh, when I went to prison, I did four and a half years to five years. Um, didn't take a lot for me to realize that that's not where I belong. And, 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 um, Thank God that um, I was able to stand on that and keep my path straight, and 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 to uh, uh, God is allowing me to be here. Just just simple because there's so many times, man, through, when I look back on my life that I should not be here, and so I know that it's God working through me, and I know that everything that I'm doing from this point on is nothing of my own. It's all for God, and I know that God wants me to do this. He wants me to save these kids' lives, okay? Because He saved mine plenty of times. So that's Amen. my mission is to save these kids as life. You know, it, it feels Amen. so good to, to hear you guys talk like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's another level of the game that most these young teenagers, we hope and pray that they end up reaching because if so many of us don't make it uh, to be able to tell these stories on the other side of the right. fence. And I think all of us can relate from 
prison experience, you know, from a transformation in life in realizing that the things that we did when we were uh, adolescents uh, were wrong and even even into our young adulthood. But it was wrong and we, it took prison time. Uh, it took, uh, you know, actually beating our head you know, through the wall and going through the motions over and over and watching uh, Christmas and, and our birthdays continue to roll by and, 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 and that incarceration and, and growing old and realizing that, you know, Social Security is passing us up. And I mean, we're living for nothing. And so, uh, you know, Troy, uh, coming back over to you, you know, I, I think that it, it's just amazing to be able to hear your story you know, and, and how you talk about uh, living for God and changing and, and realizing that what you did was wrong. You know, there's so many people that really, really need to hear that. Trent, you know, again, you saying the same thing, you know, uh, you guys uh, were big influences, I, I know, in a lot of young people's lives who uh, thought that the prison and the gang stuff was cool. And so, you know, now to be able to tell them uh, that it's not, I, I just... I'm glad that I have a platform uh, that is here so that you are able to talk about this and that we can get this message out. And if I can interject, uh, Bobby, I'd like to personally thank you for uh, for allowing us to uh, come on this platform and to express our views and uh, the way we're living today and um, how we have changed our ways and how we are wanting to reach out and help change the communities, not just Iowa that we're talking about. We're talking about all the communities in the United States that are plagued with gang violence, uh, um, crime, drug abuse, and, and, and everything. I myself personally am going to be starting a class out here in Mesa, Arizona, for uh, with a, another um, self, another um, nonprofit organization called Boys to Men, and it's a mentoring program where I'm going to be uh, mentoring mentoring uh, young young males out here in the uh, Phoenix Mesa area, and I would also like to bring that back to my home to Des Moines yes. and do the same thing there yes, sir. too. Uh, when God willing, I will be there. Well, you know, I think I think that we've got uh, a lot of big things in the makings here. You know, we've got uh, a lot of uh, some some young or some some black business. I keep wanting to say young, as though we're still in our twenties, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've st- <laughs> we've still got some some, some good uh, mid age business owners yes, yes. around here, uh, minorities in Des Moines, Iowa, and so. You know, me and Ralph uh, have thought how important it is for the business owners and the local business owners to come together. You know, we need to come together as people, as minorities, Mm -hmm. as people Mm -hmm. together. But we need to stick together, you know, and that doesn't mean we're not racist. You know, uh, we're against all that. But we as black people, white people, we need to stick together. But we really need to make sure that we're focusing in yes. on the things that we've lost. Yes. If you look at Des Moines, Iowa, and you think about Center Street, that's right, way back a long time ago, yeah. uh, when the African American culture was on Center Street, and most of the people, if you talk to uh, around here in Des Moines that are maybe in their sixties and and in and, and late sixties and seventies, yes. they remember that, yes. you know. And I have a small glimpse of it. Remember when we were kids, yes. uh, Ralph? We were six years old, but we could remember that that vibe of Center Street and how there were businesses, yes. you know, black owned businesses yeah. from, from people who stuck together. You know, we want to try to help kind of uh, reflavor that and bring a little bit of that back or at least do what we can. I mean, we don't even have family reunions to, uh, these days. Yeah, that's 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 very sad. I mean, uh, uh, I remember them things too, Bobby. Uh, growing up down there, like Black Pride in the park and things like that. You know, where people could get out and enjoy themselves with their families and stuff like that. Yeah, I tell you, this I've been back. Through, I've been through the Moines a few times, man, and I just don't see any of that anymore. I mean, you know, it's just like it's it's non-void there. Now, uh, brother Michael Winfrey uh, comes back, Pastor Winfrey, and uh, bless him. He's he's been a a, a great. Uh, mentor to me. He's been a man who also uh, represents 
uh, what he stood on since the day uh, that he's got out and trans uh, transformed his life and became a pastor. I mean, he's out in Dallas. He's he's doing a great job. But when he comes back, uh, I always love to talk to him because. You know, he always talks about how he couldn't see himself ever coming back here and having the highlight of going to the Elks, you know, on a Saturday night or something like that. With all that he's doing and, and all that he's been doing in his life, he couldn't mm. see, you know, coming back and settling for, for less. And, you know, I could just I, I can relate to that so well. You know, Troy, you, you, you to, I told you, you know, Des Moines, Iowa, I'm here. You know, I love being where I'm, I'm from, but uh, it's not a place that I would consider myself uh, wanting to, to live or reside in another five years from now. So, you know, I, um, I want to establish what I can, but I, I just, you know, seeing what I've seen here in Des Moines, Iowa uh, for African American, I see that there are still, there are a lot of things that we are still at a huge disadvantage of. And I was, I've been able to see a lot of that firsthand. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I, I'm able to see other states where they kind of bypass and, and they don't, they don't frown on, on so much, uh, really second chance individuals. You know, I think that, uh, you guys have done a great job. Uh, we got a lot of our, I got a lot of the questions out that I was asked that I wanted to know. Um, thank you too, uh, very much for coming on the Image TV podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, you're locked and loaded into nothing but a multitude of a megathon of love here on the Image TV podcast, episode number 36. We are about out of time now, so we want to say so long to Trent and Troy Muir, and we want to say thank you guys for coming on the show. Thank you, my brother, uh, Ralph Hall. For coming on the show, thank, thank you, you thank guys you. for tuning on. Thank for you for having us, Bobby. KJ thank you for having us, Bobby. Thank uh, you, thank you for Ralph Hall. Thank you, Ralph Hall, for being there and for you, doing what you're doing. Good I good see you, your, brother. I see your post yes, all sir. the way out here in Arizona yes, for your blue carpet event. Yes, sir. Yes, and um, I'm I'm spreading it on my account too. Yes, sir. also. So keep doing what you're doing, brother. Positive yes, things sir. is what yes, we're all trying to do right now. Yes, thank sir. you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you guys so much. God bless. And ladies and gentlemen, once again, on the Image TV podcast at this time, as we say, it's a wrap.